Welcome and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at... Well, we've covered it before, but we're going to be looking at the um, the recalibration station, or more specifically, the tinkering uh, that you can do now. Uh, now, tinkering, for uh, the players that have played before and are back after a bit of a break, it's simply um, access to the re recalibration station anywhere in the world, as long as you are not uh, in combat. You can open your inventory, hit M, and uh, from this screen, it's just the recalibration station or the renamed tinkering uh, station from your inventory. Uh, but yeah, that is basically the principle of tinkering. We're, we'll go down into, we'll break down each of these uh, now so that you can properly understand how it works uh, for the newer players among you. Uh, if you do find it useful, be sure to leave me a like uh, and subscribe if you don't want to miss any videos uh with that being said let's get into it so from left to right the first thing you will find is library now for argument's sake i'm just going to be adding a um we're just going to be adding a, a attribute in front of library so it is your attributes library going into it you're going to meet with this screen now what you can do if you find a piece of gear out in the world um, that has a attribute on it that you want to use, but you don't particularly want to use that piece of gear uh, for whatever which reason, it may just not be what you want, or um, it's a tank piece with all yellow rolls, but there's a good yellow roll, you can then extract that um, attribute and save it to later be put on an, a different weapon. That will be on the next uh, section of this, but just know you can extract a piece uh, by coming in here and then finding, in my case, you'll see a lot of these are orange. It's full, though, that just means that all the rolls in that specific is full and you'll see uh, white pieces as well. Uh, that just means uh, the rolls aren't maxed and I can still find rolls. The little arrows uh, on each respective one says there is something that I have in my inventory currently that I can destroy and extract that roll. So if we go into rifles, we'll see, okay, there's a base attribute that I can extract. We scroll down and we find, okay, so there is a classic M1A with a higher um, roll that I can extract. Uh, than what I had. So we're going to hold X and extract it. Note, this destroys the item. So I'm losing this M, uh, M1A, but I'm getting this roll so I can put it onto any one, any rifle that I want further forward. Just going to hold that in and there we go. So it is now extracted and I can now at any time go and recalibrate and put this on to any rifle uh, as long as it's a rifle. Now, this is one of the few places that it doesn't matter what weapon or what gear piece. Uh, you can do any mask. If you have a roll, you can extract it. The only caveat with that is um, any named items, you will not be able to extract the, the reason they are named, basically. So for the Eagle's Grips, the new gloves, uh, they have weapon handling uh, that are maxed. That weapon handling you can't extract. But any of the other two you want, you can. Uh, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much the library. Uh, I do recommend working through it, finding all the talents for things, um, extracting them. Uh, you can always uh, find new weapons. Like this weapon, I have max SMG damage, but these two are very low. I don't particularly like magazine size, so I can extract flatline if I wanted to. Uh, for the sake of the video, though, I am going to refrain from doing so. But that is the library. So any weapons you have or any gear you have, you want to save a stat, you can uh, save it there. And then the next part of the uh, this list comes in, which is tinkering. Now, tinkering consists out of two main things. We will uh, we'll look at the recalibration first, then we'll look at optimization. In terms of uh, what recalibration is, is if you have a armor piece that you want to recalibrate, let's say uh, 
this is my equipped mask. This is all the masks in my inventory, I believe. I don't think they... I don't believe they show out of um, the your cash. So I think this is everything you have on you. But I have this mask. And you can see I have an available recalibration. Now, this has been recalibrated with has protection on it as uh, as um, shown with the little wrench and screwdriver now i have a max has pro roll in my library that's why i was able to put it on if i wanted to re-roll it i can and this is actually a very good showcase so i can put anything on it uh, that i want to just hold x as long as i have the money and the resources it'll then just copy and paste that roll into this slot now, i'm not going to do that i this the hasbro is very important on this build but the reason i'm saying this is actually very nice to see as you can see um if we're talking recalibration both of the these two are now blacked out reason being is you can only uh, re-roll one slot on a piece so there's we can look at it this as three slots we have um, the armor, we have the health damage, and then we have Hasbro. In this case, actually, the health damage will also not be able to be recalibrated because it is a named item. And uh, by default, you can't recalibrate the named uh, the named uh, thing on an item. But I can't now re-roll armor if I wanted to because it has already been recalibrated. But uh, that's pretty much the entire recalibration thing so find a role that you want on something you extract it in the library then you come here you find a gear piece a mask or a chest piece or whatever that you want that role on and then you use resources to put that role on this now for the second part that we have in the tinkering station is optimization optimization is simply so on this mask i have now recalibrated this I can't recalibrate armor. I have a max armor, so I could have just put armor on it again uh, if I wanted to fill up the armor bar. Uh, that's one way I can do it. The other way I can do it is, as you can see here, is optimization. Now, optimization requires um, some additional resources in order for you to recalibrate it or calibrate it, optimize it. And you can see it'll go from that little bit. So you just optimize something to fill up the bar. That is if you want your full, fully optimized um, gear pieces. Uh, not really much else to say about optimization. These uh, resources are, there's, some of them are pretty difficult to get. Uh, mainly the optimization things you can get if your watch level is high enough. You can just um, use your points to get them. Uh, this is going to be... The second resource is going to be the other one that a lot of people wonder is uh, you just look at the symbol. Now that is the outcast. Uh, that's the outcasts. Or is that the cleaners? I, hyenas, I don't recall. But you're going to find a bounty with that symbol on the open world map. Going to do the bounty when you kill the main uh, named enemy. Uh, they usually drop that resource for you. Now that's library and tinkering they pretty much run hand in hand and this is going to be the mid game mid to late game you're going to be using this a lot expertise is pretty much in game in game now it was a bit of a pain uh for people who uh, played the game for a while when this came in uh for someone who's just starting out expertise is honestly one of the best and nicest ways to level expertise uh, since we already had played for a long time, we needed to specifically go and play with a lot of stuff. You're just going to be building XP uh, as you go. Uh, but let's explain that as it goes. So I'm max proficiency with everything. Uh, all that means is as you play with a weapon or a certain gear piece, you're going to be gaining experience up to level 10. You will see if you look at pretty much any weapon or any gear piece, um you'll see up here is a proficiency thing now you're going to be i believe zero if you haven't played with something yet if you've played with something it will level up when you reach level 10 it'll say okay you are proficient with it uh no upgrades active 
once you're proficient with something, you can then start upgrading it in the uh, tinkering station in expertise. Now, based on the this little small number down here, as you can see, zero out of 90, that is going to be based on a per level basis. So you have 10 levels on each weapon. Um, that would mean I would need to uh, level up if new weapons are added, I'd need to level an additional nine weapons or gear pieces uh, in order for this to go up by the bigger number to go up by one. Uh, so that's how you level up the big number. That's just a basically an experience bar. You could say how much experience you need, how many weapons you need um, to level up. And that's going to be the expertise level. This expertise level, if you have a weapon or something, um, I have an SMG on me. We have the backfire on us. So this backfire, I can now use resources to add 1%, one level, one grade level worth of um, weapon damage on it, which is one. Now I can add 26 because I am level 26 expertise. So I can get a 20 additional 26% weapon damage uh, out of this weapon purely with this. Uh, you can do so with armor as well uh each note that each uh named item and exotic gear piece does count as a separate thing uh for instance the chill out although it is a gilgard mask um it counts as its own entity uh it is the chill out mask so you're going to need to level any named weapons gear uh separately from their uh respective brand sets um as you do down here so the one way of leveling it, like I said, is just playing with it. Naturally, if you have um, gear specifically, if you have two or three pieces of gear equipped, you're going to be gaining XP or gaining that a uh, level faster because um, when you're playing, it takes the XP you're gaining. So your normal player level, it takes that XP into account and then it adds it to um, each gear piece individually. So if you have three gear pieces out of a set, uh, each gear piece will be getting, but since it's in the same set, you'll basically get be tripling the amount of XP you're getting for that respective uh, gear set. Uh, the way I did it specifically was I equipped one gear, a different gear piece in each slot. Um, so... I, I, want, I mainly started with named pieces, so I did take a named mast, a named body armor, a named backpack, uh, and then play through it like that, maybe, and add one exotic gear piece, one exotic weapon, just so that we level exotic since we can't equip multiple exotics at the same time. That's mainly how I did it. The other way you can do it is um, donating the same item. So you can donate in masks or okay, we're in gloves if you have a bloody knuckles you can donate that bloody knuckles here in order to boost up that level uh, same with if you have a normal um, electric mask or electric gear piece in this case because electric encompasses uh, masks needs everything you could donate that in order to level it up here um that's still okay sure you can do that as well um that's what I like. I liked running the summit for it. A lot of people run um, the not the incursion. The incursion is the difficult. What is it called? Countdown. A lot of people run countdown uh, with targeted loot and then just shove all the targeted loot that they target in. I preferred running um, summit. I just in general prefer playing summit. I don't like countdown that much. Uh, but that's going to be personal preference. Countdown. I have to come out and say is the better way mainly because you there's a lot of higher level enemies that you kill um and there's a lot more um drops that you get the only problem with that is if you don't have a good build uh people are going to be pretty upset carrying you through it i find countdown people don't really care uh carrying someone through a heroic um summit where countdown one person holding the entire team back could be a problem uh but yeah then finally the way you can is now i can't show it to you 
because I don't have it. But if you if you go into one of these and you you'll find a button down here that says um donate resources i believe or something along those lines that's going to be donating your resources that you use for recalibration and stuff like that i would not recommend doing that um apart from maybe something that you don't have so if you don't have the uh, the Eagle Bearer, the Ravenous, those two things, um, they're quite difficult to get. There's the raid exclusives. If you don't have them, um, maybe consider putting resources into that. Uh, if you can get something, get it. Uh, the Chill Out Mask is another one uh, which you can not You can only get at certain times. You can still get it now for a short period of time um, because they, they added it for the summer event. Generally, you can only get it um, December 1st to January 30th, so those two months. Uh, if you're not in that time frame and it's bad luck, I would say maybe consider uh, putting the, the resources towards that as well. But, um, so yeah, that's just a basic breakdown of the, the tinkering station and the recalibration station and everything. I hope it was um, informative and I hope, it, I hope you followed I do talk a bit I do talk a bit around corners sometimes, but yeah. Um I don't think I missed anything. We went through library, but we went through optimization and recalibration and we hit expertise as well. But yeah, um as you like I said, that's that's the video. And if you did enjoy it, uh please be sure to like, subscribe, and see you next time.